I know climbing can help us reimagine what we want the world to be. Super bonito. I was jumping around and climbing over things since I was young. I didn't have climbing shoes, but I was called to doing it and it felt good. So you could say that it was like from one day to the next I was climbing and I loved it so much. And I think, in that sense, I feel like I always was a climber and I always will be one. Growing up in Mexico City, I never had the access or someone to kind of like take me climbing until I met Miguel. <laughs> and it was very humbling and fun and scary but my love and my experience with climbing has shifted throughout time. And as I'm growing older, I hope I'm able to learn how to do it in different ways. I can't remember the year, but we met a long time ago. We met in Mexico, at the beach. I actually told her the day after we met that I fell in love with her, and I think it was the first time I'd said that, probably. But then she was like, oh, I fell in love with you too, but <laughs> I am about to start this new relationship with someone else. But I was very much of a hippie back then, and so I was like, love is free, do what you need to do. <laughs> yeah. So then there was a couple of years where we were not together, but there was always this connection. Our first day was climbing in Mexico. I think it's been like a big part of our relationship. It has helped us learn how to communicate better with each other in terms of safety, in terms of care. In Mexico, we were able to kind of like build our bubble of what climbing meant for us. We began to participate in the climbing world. We were getting more into climbing and trying to climb harder, and there was this moment that Mariana was competing. I had a lot of fun in competitions, but it also created a lot of anxiety. There started being expectations of how strong you should climb or like what grade you should climb. And it started having a negative weight in my body and also in my motivation. So that was what we grappled with. Like, is this why we climb? Or is it because we actually enjoy it and see the meaning in ourselves and in our community? Yes! We've been in the U.S. for more than 10 years, mostly through student visas. I feel like, for me, growing up, the U.S. was like the empire. You know, I went to a school where it's like you speak English, you don't speak Spanish, and you try to speak English without an accent. 
But at the same time, when he first came here, people would be like, where are you from? And we'd be like, from Mexico. And they were like, no, you're not, you know? Or you don't sound Mexican, you don't look Mexican. I think it was just like hard to make sense sometimes because I didn't have a lot of context about the history of the US or like the history of LA. And I think it just took us time to like understand where we fit. What's going on here? The cops are raiding the neighbor's house. There's one cop that went to the back and another one that's in front. Our move to the US was also a politicization moment for us. I've seen so much harm and oppression. And so we've started to talk about like, how can we actually challenge some of these things? Through studying, through relationships, I got to be part of organizing around anti-police and carceral systems, migrant justice, around anti-war movement. And through that work, I got introduced to this idea of story-based strategy. Hi, everyone. Hopefully we can keep uh, working together. I think some assumption or values are the sovereignty of indigenous people is impacted by the policies and actions that take land away from them. Narrative strategy is about recognizing how dominant narratives create values that are destroying ourselves and the world. And this idea that we can challenge these with our own experiences and visions. At the same time, there's things you can't control, right? Like changing culture is so abstract. And even thinking about changing a policy, it may take like 10 years. And then next year, they may like revoke it, right? So like sometimes it's not like very concrete. But climbing feels more concrete. Fuck. You're building strength. Or your body is adapting in ways that you maybe don't totally understand. <laughs> so I love how it is a challenge in ways that feel less abstract. <laughs> So Muy bien. Yes, let's go. Fuerte, fuerte. Eso, eso. Eso, venga. Yo estoy contigo. Venga. Venga. Eso. Sí, eso. Venga, aquí estamos. So strong. Venga. So strong. Venga, chicos. Let's go. Yes. Let's go. Let's freaking go. Let's go. You got it. You got it. Venga. Let's go. Venga. Let's go, Mariana. Venga, uno más. Yeah, one more. Let's go. You got this. Yes. Eso. El siguiente es buenísimo. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, shit. Venga, respira. Venga, amor. Venga, con todo. ¡No! Oh, ¿Qué pasó? Esto pasó. Ah, oh, shit. Well, grabbing this pocket. Well, maybe I can try to grab it with these two fingers, but maybe I can try one more time. Quieres que te tipe? I'm not trying to pressure you. No, 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 no. It's okay. I felt you pressuring me as well. <laughs> Welcome to my life. Mm. When 
We started climbing. It was like our work and then climbing. So it's like very separate in a way. For example, we were doing work around indigenous people's rights. But at the same time, we were visiting people's lands without asking if climbing was okay. So that's been the tension. Like, how do we navigate those contradictions and practice the values that we have? I work at a school of education uh, at a university and have seen education as a place where we can reclaim schools as a place of community and ask, like, who controls the story and who controls policy making. For example, if we wanted to democratize policy, we need to be paying attention to and listening to the voices of young people. And Rachel. So I guess we're at this point with the book where we have a draft, kind of a, like how it's going to look like. We have the flow of the book. We've had some of the chapters written. And then the other thing that we wanted maybe to do is to find quotes that we like. What is that? This is everything that we said. Damn, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck is that? Bro, that's as big as that's... hell. <laughs> I know, I know. We met Luis and Carisma six or seven years ago when both of them were students at a school that supports young people that had been pushed out of school or that were incarcerated. At some point, that became this project of writing this book together as a group to reclaim this like, authorship over our stories. Luis, would you like to read what, what you've written? Uh, I still got way more to write. I've been trying to think. I've been working on this for a little while, but I've just been kind of stuck on this. This letter ded is dedicated to all those who couldn't see me. Um, I am not only for myself. I'm speaking for others, the un us, the unseen, the unheard, the unacknowledged, the youthful who fight for success but are burdened by the structure of the system that we call life. We are the ones who endure the violence of oppression, the witnesses of a system designed to control the very aspect of daily life, a system who is designed um, to help us fail. Right. Yes. When you go to there, like, there's some place, even when I was growing up, bro, like, in school, bro, those times I'll talk in Spanish, and they'll be like, you can't talk Spanish in school. Yeah, like, they're, they're, And I'll be like, what, they'll be like, a whole ass scene. It's like, what the fuck? Like, how are you going to stop somebody from being, like, who they are and shit, you know? There's a silence that happens when they punish you, but then there's a silence that happens as you silence yourself because they've taught you that you're not good enough. But that's why we want teachers to be reading your book. Carisma, you want to edit yours? That, that letter right there? <laughs> I can't even read that shit. I'm going to try to do it. But if I it. get stuck, feel, I'm... Feel it. Uh, I remember your name, Ms. Gillen Waters. I remember your name. I want to I want to thank you for taking the time out and teaching us about the black culture and music, not just the negativity stuff. You stopped me from wanting to go home and do some bad shit like fucking people up and causing problems for my mother. You stopped me from wanting to talk back to my teachers and actually wanting to learn new things from you. The only black teacher that I had, the only teacher that ever tell me something about my own people and then I put fucking uh you were a cool ass lady very interested in my life and intelligent you stopped me from being so angry at the other students you stopped me from fucking up other kids that were hurting just like I was you helped us see that we were only going to keep hurting each other and that it was only doing, doing uh, worse, doing us worse. I need some tissue. Oh, I got you. Thank you. Stand up, Emina. Yeah, this is gonna take me a while. <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking powerful. She was teaching us about like empowerment, bro. But she was supposed to be teaching us how to do some fucking math, which I was uh, happy with because the rest of the school year it was easier. Like we got the, we got like this urge. I don't know what it was. I felt like I got like some fucking anger out of me that I was holding in for all those years before. It was good, huh? It was a good session. Too chill, huh? 
Me recordó como viejos tiempos, yeah. cabrón. I was like, oh, fuck yeah. I remember those fucking conversations. Like, what? When I first began doing this work, I'd been accustomed to skipping the relationship building and trust building. But the work that we're doing has really been a lesson on the power of building collectively. We started to realize we can do so much when we put our hearts together and have difficult conversations. These are the things that catch on the rock and then it pulls your skin off so you can kind of like shave the extra skin off. Maybe it's because I'm a bad climber or sloppy climber, but I go through my skin really quick. <laughs> I overgripped, maybe. We've never been like super, quote unquote, strong climbers, but there was a point when we were like, oh, maybe we can get some sponsorships. And we understood that a lot of the sponsors and a lot of the companies value what you sent and your numbers. So I think that there was a part where we were certainly thinking about not necessarily the most beautiful climb, but more like just playing a numbers game. Because we were thinking about climbing in the ways that climbing was presented to us. Chongo, chongo time. Let's go. Yeah, easy peasy. So strong. Out of that pocket. Yep. Good. Let's go, Mila. Yep, you got that foot. I'm with you. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, that's it, Miguel. Good work. So strong. Venga. You're good. Good work, Miguel. That's it. Sorry, tree. Fine. It sort of protected me for half the climb. <laughs> Mándeme. Un ratito, ¿no? A ver si quieres. Maybe they want to get Oh. Who's our thing? That's something like right there. I think like every other person, there was a time where we had to begin choosing what was important for us and where we want to invest our time. And this path of high performance climbing, it actually started feeling sticky. It started feeling uncomfortable. <laughs> and I began to recognize that I enjoyed more going and sharing something in a very different way with friends that I appreciated. So I think life and the world just took us on a different route. I think you really climb like a spider. <laughs> I swear to God, bro, go crazy. Wait, what is those little chameleons? Like a bird? Cool. He's like yeah, a, like a, like a bird. He's That'd like a fast cool. sloth. Huh? But like one of them exotic birds. You don't look like a regular bird. You look like an exotic bird. <laughs> That's funny. English. Climbing is like this super fun and transformative thing when we do it together. Oh. Well, it's my fingers just because they got a quick case of arthritis. The shoes are like stiff this right now. Arthritis. <laughs> they, they got stiff as oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but every time we go into these climbing gyms, there, there are so many instances where people ask me and Mariana, "Oh, what program is this?" Or, "I'm glad you do that kind of stuff." Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> and that might be understood as a very innocent question, but it is a reminder of who belongs and who doesn't. One of the first times that we went with Carisma and Luis, we would get to the gym and it would feel like silent. And people were looking at them because they were not the status quo of the gym. Yes, sir. Come on. It's almost like people have assumptions about who has earned the rights to have access and who is good and worthy of being celebrated. Come on. Yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. I just got some more. But I don't have a fucking membership anymore, anyways. What happened? This is like 130 a month. Come on. I know. And people are really into talking about inclusion or talking about diversifying. But I think it's not about like who takes who climbing. It's about the pace at which wealth and power are beginning to fracture people's relationships with each other and the world. You know, climbing in a gym is expensive, but also having the privilege to like take a weekend off and, and have a car and have gear is something that is unfortunately limited to a very small number of people. And at the same time, as climbing continues to grow more and more, with a bigger footprint and a bigger presence, the only thing that we care about is climbing hard. The dominant ideology of climbing, I think it's focused on like how hard, how tall, how fast you climb. This big swing, he just explodes in one go, up into the move. Such a display of technical prowess. There's a very competitive aspect of climbing because now it's in the Olympics. There's all these different dimensions of what climbing has been and what is becoming that exist in tension with who we are as people and who we are as climbers. I don't think we can continue to pretend like climbing is, is sort of like we love nature and we're all hippies and we love the world. Like, what is the cost of climbing, right? What is the impact? What is required for this sport to continue to exist? At the same time, people should have access to joy. So how can we cultivate spaces and create opportunities for joy and community? How can we share this thing that we love? How are you feeling? I feel good. Yeah? Just trying to think about it before I do it. Yes. I don't want to just rush into it. It's always good. Got to actually really think about it first. Because the more I just try to rush into it, it's just going to make it harder for me. Yeah, it's And that's what I want to do. It's it. like, that's why I also like rock climbing, because it, it teaches me patience. Like, you can't force that shit. You got to really just sit here and wait. Like, everything else I do, I'll be trying to do shit fast. Can't really do that with this program and shit. Come on, right there, right foot. Both hands, both hands. <laughs> yes, there you go, come on. Yes, 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 yes. Nice, Karisma, come on. All the way to the good one, left foot, jump it up. Yes, yes, there you go, come on, one more. Come on, left hand, one more, come on! <laughs> good right. shit! Yes, let's go, let's go, next one's really good. Yes! <laughs> That's right. Oh, you did that game. <laughs> shit! Shit! <laughs> Yeah, that shit was good. I like that one. Yeah. I know. That one felt like it was a testimony for me. Is that that? Yeah, that one. The move up to the to that is a little bit bigger, yeah. challenging. Yeah, it probably goes so far. <laughs> what, are you what are you talking about? <laughs> For a long time, I couldn't think of being a climber and having a space in climbing that felt right with who I was outside of climbing. And I think part of my own growth has been to own our responsibility to shape the future and the story of climbing. And I think that it's not like an end point, but a process, and it's a process that can be collective. <laughs> That's what we're 
almuerzo. A la tela azul. Chicos. Okay, grab this one. And grab. No, 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 I need some. This one. And yeah, that's a good one. There's this saying that comes from social movements that says that what the hands do, the heart learns. And something I've learned from friends in the movement is this idea of like just transition. Like, what does it mean to transition to another type of world where we're sharing, where we are taking care of one another, where we are asking our relatives, our community, the land we visit, what does it mean to be in right relationship with one another? <laughs> where we're asking these questions constantly so that we are creating that world we want. Good to see you too, man. Good. Good to see you, Daddy. Good, good. Good, good. The challenge is working and stuff, you know? Yeah. Now I'm not um, at the, with the program. So, like, now I work for the school. So now I'm right there. Good. Yeah, now I'm working for the school. Now I'm, like, doing the same things that, like, they used to do for me, basically. But, like, yesterday I was talking to my friends, like, sometimes walking around is, like, the only therapy we could really have, you know? Like, we could probably be trying to do other shit, but it's, like, fuck, we're only limited to so much, you know? So it's just, like, fuck, like, at least try to find something that you could cope with and shit, you know? Like, fuck. Fíjese, güey. Igualmente. Vale, pues. Y sí, piénsalo, caerte desde esos dos crimps es Superman. El movimiento de Superman. Este es el bueno. O sea, es... Ok. El bueno es el de la derecha. Que puedes probarla ahorita, que era de estos dos, este y este. O sea, pero me tengo que poner la cuerda en algún lugar. Aquí. Ya como que subes tantito y le jalas. Subes tantito y le jalas. Subes tantito y le jalas. Yo por safety. Uh, yeah, nada más. I've never done this before. Growing up, I didn't see climbing as a community. And like my family didn't know anything about it. And because they socialize me as a Mexican woman, they usually are not happy that I'm climbing. They think this is very dangerous. Oh my God. But I think it's kept me safe in some ways. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. But I know there's importance too of just like trying, even if you're not able to do it, because that creates the conditions for you maybe to one day be able to do it. Muy <laughs> bien. That's not good. Okay. That's not good. I'm just trying different things, but feels like, I don't know if I want to try without a rope at this moment, but we'll see. The scariest move, honestly, which you look like really strong, more strong, way stronger than me is swinging your left foot. Moving it is kind of scary, but once you put it, it's over. You got it. Hang on. I got you right here. and you can breathe. Yeah, you yeah. So good. You can relax. Yeah. You're good. Good, good, Mariana. Eso. Venga, Mariana. Sigue, fuerte. Estamos contigo. Muy bien. Bien, fuerte. Mariana. So strong. Venga. So strong, Mariana. That's it. So strong. That's it. 
That's it. Yeah! Woo! Yay! Ah, sí, Ray. Uy, nos va a sacar uno. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you come to a rock, then you think it's like impossible, right? And then you start building yourself mentally, emotionally, collectively to feel the movement and like feel the top out and like see the sun while you're topping out. And it's just like an experience that it's more somatic and like emotional than like rational. Gracias. And the spaces I've been part of and people I've known have helped me feel more empowered. Sí, limpiaste. Sí. The first time limpiaste. I've been training. Works. So I feel like if we cooperate and support ourselves and care for one another, climbing can help us create a world that we thought was not possible as well. We knew our visa was expiring, but we thought we could apply for another visa. That was a lottery, and it was kind of abrupt, where we realized, like, oh, maybe that's not the case. So we have to go back to Mexico. It's sad that we have to leave this home and this community that we've built for many years, and that the change was so abrupt. It's a lot, a lot of memories, a lot of time that we've been here. A lot of good stuff. So this is at the red. Time to go. When we started climbing, the pictures go because they bring up memories. They remind us of the love that we have for them. The biggest treasure we have is the things that we get from other people and being in relationship with other people and in community. And you get these little bits of, of life that you get to share with others. It's like taking time, you know, like a lot of time for us to feel at home here. And now it has started feeling at home and now we have to leave. Yeah, it's kind of hard to leave. It'll be sad. These barriers and borders and papers, a lot of them governed by money and power, they have a huge bearing on where you can be and where you cannot be. And we're super lucky because we have a lot of access and a lot of privilege, a lot more than people that are really going through it. Throughout the years, we've had the opportunity to like bump into all these amazing people. There's people that we know like the first months that we got to LA and there's people that we've met recently. If by December you have not visited, I will be very offended. And you too, Joy. I think that we have built something that is really sincere, just very sincere like and relational to go learn some new lessons in life and, and bring about some change and bring about some pause, some reflections, you know, some distance and perspective and then and then we'll come back. And I think sadness is sadness will in my opinion at least will soon become very beautiful memories and you know things that we will take with us. I think it's a good time for everybody to go and I do feel like having to leave LA is hard. But I guess something that we've talked about, it's like change is good and can bring things that you didn't think of. So that makes me feel better about leaving LA. Keep going, keep going. We got it! Good job, y'all. Very nice work. Well, appreciation to, to everyone. 
It was nice, nice to climb with you. One last time. Mm. Oh, it's so sad. I know. Okay, well, let me show you real quick. That's Mariana. It's also still yeah. a message. See, we still have some boxes. Well, what? Right. 